morning everybody or actually it might be afternoon by the time this goes out depending on technology uh welcome to another talk in chile the chile tuesday <laughs> today i've got our very i've got our very own paula with us today um from hartlepool carers and we're going to be having a bit of a chat about what we've got going on what a carer is and how to get involved with us hi paula hi how are you sir? hi so paula do you want to i know you don't want to but are you going to tell us a little bit about what a carer is yeah so a lot of people struggle with the title or being labeled as a carer um they quite often think that they're not a carer but an unpaid carer is somebody who looks after a family member or friend and that could be because they either have a physical um, illness or a mental illness. It might be because um, the drug and alcohol dependent or they could be elderly and frail. But if you're looking at somebody in one of those groups and they can manage without your support, then actually you are classed as a carer. And it only has to be like an hour a week, doesn't it, as a minimum to be a carer, as long as you're doing something for them. Absolutely. It can be one hour a week and be 24 seven. Um, but if that person cannot manage without the input that you have, then then you're classed as a carer. And I think a lot of people, when they think of a carer, they think automatically of sort of cleaning them and getting them dressed and stuff. But it, ha it doesn't have to just be that, does it? No, most definitely. It's, it's, it's anything that that person needs. So you could be picking up medication, you could be doing their cleaning, you could be doing their shopping for them. It could be emotional support. Um, so it might be that somebody has, you know, um, any kind of illness can, can also impact somebody's mental health. And just being there and talking to somebody can also just count as, as caring for that person. Yeah, definitely. Um, and we've actually got, we, we actually work with children as well, don't we? We work with children as young as five um uh, and we're, we're seeing more and more young young people registered now i think especially obviously during the pandemic mm -hmm. yeah yeah and and that's it and generally for children um a lot of our young carers it is the emotional impact that having someone in the household with an illness or disability has on them and um, so it, that mom or dad are busy looking after other siblings or grandparents or whatever does have an emotional impact on the on the child as well yeah definitely we see that quite a lot with our with our young carers so if you think you might be a carer what should they do next Paula okay so the easiest way um during the current situation is to have a look on our website and there's a registration form on the website, which is really basic and really, really easy to fill in. Um, you submit that registration form. It's just got your basic questions like your name, age, address. Um, and then one of our contact team members would get back in touch with you. Um, and they can go through things like what your caring role looks like and what support that we can put in place. If... Um, if you're not able to do that and you're not able to get onto the website, please just give us a call as well and we'll take your um, your registration over the phone. Um, that, that, you know, there's always a, a means and a ways. We can even send you a hard copy out in the post if that's what you would prefer as well. Yeah, I know a lot of people, well, not a lot of people, but some people just don't like technology and, and struggle with technology or don't have access to technology, which is actually something that we can help with um, once you are registered with us. We do have a tech loan service where we can help people up and running with the technology, provide it if they need it, give them support on how to get involved, obviously, because so many of our activities are taking place by Zoom. Um, so we've got loads going on at the minute um, in terms of activities for different groups. We've got our young carers and we've got our young adult carers which is 18 to 25 year olds we've got our adults we've got a specific male carer group and then we've got our ex-carers groups as well for people who've sadly lost a loved one and have sort of trying to come to terms with the that and their sort of loss of their caring role as well yeah so the the, the, the tech side of things is really important because at the moment unfortunately that's the only way that we can you know we can offer support and we can get in touch with with other um other people and other organizations out there um so you know it can be a bit scary for people um tech um but as you say we've got um 
right from sort of we've got um, involvement with the local authority I'm not quite sure of the lady but we've got people who can um, go out and actually show you how to use the test even from being a complete novice to be able to get you onto a Zoom meeting so you can see other people, you can meet up with your family and friends. It has a massive, huge impact, um, you know, on, on your mental health and peer-to-peer -peer support we found is so important for everybody. Yeah, it definitely is. Uh, so we've got a full range of activities going on at the moment, haven't we? Um, in terms of on a Monday, we've got our... 11 a.m. we've got a exercise session which is seated exercise um i run that one it's a low impact uh but it does get you does get your heart rate going a bit so that's a monday at 11. um uh, paul it's shout if i miss something because i'm going to try and go through no well i'm just all the days about the seated exercise you tailor it for sort of basic beginners right the way through and you can you, you adapt that and don't you um so anybody can join in that one of any, yeah definitely any fitness <laughs> <laughs> so that's our monday morning and then a monday afternoon we've got our young carers so we've got a young carers session i think most days now so monday is a young carers exercise session at four o'clock then we go into a tuesday which is our uh moving forward group for our ex-carers that's a tuesday morning yeah that's right you know yes and then also on a tuesday we've got our young care session on a tuesday afternoon and these are fantastic i love them so what we do is we uh usually deliver out um some sort of things so that the children can take part with it whether it be cooking or a craft uh, sometimes we'll do a quiz or do bingo and then we all get together on zoom and have a bit of a chat and join in on the activity um so that's a tuesday at four o'clock our young adult care group for our 18 to 25 year olds that's starting on a tuesday fortnightly um and also our male carers group they meet on the alternate tuesday um they meet on the alternate tuesday nights and that's at seven o'clock then on a wednesday we have i'm putting myself on the spot now oh teenage session so our wednesday is our teenagers for Throston, so we call it the Throston group because usually they would go down to Throston Youth Centre and be able to hang out there and, and play sports and get to chat and stuff. So that's for our teenagers on a Wednesday and that's half past four. Nothing else on a Wednesday, is the Paula? Is that the only one? Oh, I don't think so. I think that um, when is our, um, we, have we mentioned coffee morning, which is now an afternoon? Co coffee morning. <laughs> Coffee mornings are Wednesday. That's one o'clock, yeah. I'm saying. Um, and that's lovely. That's a chance for our carers to get together and have a natter. Thursday, we've got bingo, which is that's really, really popular. It's going really well, that one. Um, and we've also got for our newly registered young carers on a fortnightly basis, they have a chance to come in and meet the staff and meet other new young carers so they get to know a little bit about what we're doing. Um, and also on a Thursday once a month, we've got our family quiz via Facebook Live, which I just love. It's so much fun. Uh, so that's uh, on a Thursday, seven o'clock once a month. Um, I am quiz master. Usually I'm really unorganised and the quiz is not written until about six o'clock. Uh, it usually involves some sort of yeah it usually involves some sort of singing at some point from me because i'll get a song in her head and i'll just randomly sing uh, <laughs> so that's a thursday and then friday is our one day where we don't do anything oh no we do we've got one heart one mind one future yeah absolutely so that's for our parent carers so um we have parent carers and their family members being able to join um with a, a discussion type platform um i think they all get together i think this week as well we have some um additional sessions that we just slot in as well so there's a lovely one happening today with one heart one mind which is um the tiger who came to tea and they're getting a, yeah. a free book and they're going to read the story together and have afternoon tea together so you know it, it's a good idea i think to keep an eye on our facebook page um or the website just to make sure that you, you you're up to date with any any um additional activities that are, are again you know getting added to all all of the time really yeah and subscribe for our newsletter as well um 
We have tried anyone who's already registered with us. We have, if we've got an email address for you, we have subscribed you to our newsletter, which goes out once a week. Uh, check your spam because it does sadly sometimes go into the spam. If you're not receiving it, give us a ring or drop us an email with an email address and we'll get you registered, get you added onto that so you can make sure you're getting all the information through there as well. Absolutely. So there's, there's a, a massive um, offer every week, really, of things that we um, we provide on our our own platforms. But we, we also encourage people to um, look what's out there in the community and yeah. join in things that are already um, under out in the community. And we've had, um, you know, there's some good links with our local authority and um, the activities and the events that they're organising as well. As well. Yeah, most definitely. There's so much out there in the community and that's sort of what this Talking Tuesday is all about as well. Um, hopefully we're going to have different groups on every week um, talking about what they've got going on so we can sort of direct people to that and let them know that there is a support out there in the community. Because we people are feeling quite isolated, understandably, the way things are at the moment. But even if we can't meet up in person, there is support out there, whether it be for mental health, physical activities, financial support. There is still those links out there and we just want to make sure that people are aware of them yeah that's right because people can sometimes um the they, they don't realize that they're a carer until maybe a year down the road and they suddenly think well actually yeah i am doing those things or or your care and role increases and and it and unfortunately, um, people don't come to us until they're having a little bit of a, a crisis or something is happening within the, the care and that they can't um, cope with at that time. So we would love people to sort of think about whether they are a carer, think about what you do for other people within your family or with your friends. Um, and it, it's not a label and it's not a tag. It's just for you to know that we're there for you and, and we, we can provide lots of information. It's not just about activities and events events that's great and the p2p support is great but you know having a care and role it can impact your finances like yourself your health and well-being and you can feel isolated but there's all always things out there that that can we we can signpost you to um you know we we have um benefits advice that we can give um we can complete gp referrals so that your gp is aware that you are a carer um, we can offer OT referrals. So if you care and role and um, you're struggling with something within your home, um, we, can, we can bring OT on board to make sure that everything's safe at home for you to carry out your care and role. Um, you know, we can help with housing situations. There's so many things that we can do um, just to make sure that you, you, you know, your, your care and role is carried out and you, and you look after yourself because that's one of the main things we're here for, we need to make sure that the carer looks after themselves because if you're not well, you're not going to be able to look after anybody. Exactly, and that's, that's completely it. Uh, something we do need to cover at the minute, um, people might have seen on social media, is the hashtag UC25, uh, which is um, it's a fantastic um, initiative, which the PFC... Trust, I always get the initials the wrong way around, the PFC Trust have uh, come up with to help raise funds for a respite caravan for our young carers. Um, we're trying to raise £50,000 for a caravan which will enable us to take our young carers away for a little break when they need it. Uh, the 25 is all around the fact that that's the average amount of time a young carer will spend in their caring role every week, isn't it? It's 25 hours. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, and that's sort of obviously throughout um, COVID and lockdown, young carers' roles have increased massively, um, and they're not getting that respite. Um, they're at home twenty four seven, um, so they're taking on more responsibility um, within the care and role. So it, it, it it's really essential that we look to the future and think when we can get out there and we can get them respite. That there's something there and there's facilities there for for us to allow them to do that. So what we're asking for is people to get involved and come up with their own UC25 challenge if they would like to. So you can pick any challenge you want as long as it's got the number 25 in it. So some people are doing 25 TikToks. We've got people who are doing 25 runs, um, losing 25 pounds, all sorts of stuff. So if you want to do your own challenge, you can do. But we are also doing a Hartlepool Carers Challenge 
which is a 25 hour exercise relay challenge on the 27th and 28th of February. And for 25 hours, there's going to be somebody moving constantly. That's that's the gist of it. So starting, I think it's nine o'clock on the Saturday morning, right the way through. And we're going to have activities going every hour. Sometimes it'll be individuals doing something. And sometimes it will be something on our Facebook Live that you can join in with, like Pound or Seated Exercise or Club Exercise. Um, and we're looking for people to get involved with that as well. So we've still got some hour slots left. If you would like to take part and donate an hour of your time to keep moving, you can do any exercise you want. It can just be a walk. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. Um, or you can donate. Yeah, I'm sorry, Sarah, I was just about to say it's not just about taking part because if you can't take part for whatever reason, then you can donate. So you can either participate or donate whichever year or both if you want, but either way it would be really, really helpful. Yeah, £50,000 is an awful lot of money to raise. So if anyone can donate, fantastic. We're also looking at businesses as well. If businesses would like to sponsor one of the hour slots, we're only asking for £25. Uh, you see the theme here was the 25. Uh, so we're looking for £25 from businesses to sponsor an hour slot. Um, and again, it's all going to go in the pot to hopefully be able to give our young carers a, a breakaway when they need it. Uh, so it's really, really, really good cause. So if anyone can get involved in any way, please get in touch with us. Yeah, and £50,000 does sound like a, it is a lot of money, but get that caravan that's going to be a resource that we can use for many years ahead and it's going to help hundreds and hundreds of young carers um so so it is really important it's something that we've wanted um for the organization for many years now we sort of we, we need there so if anybody can donate that that would be amazing yeah it really would and we're looking forward to seeing what everybody gets up to i've uh, stupidly signed up for quite a few things so i'm doing an hour's who who can challenge at three o'clock in the morning? I'm doing an hour's run dressed as Superwoman, um, and I'm also doing an hour's exercise seated exercise class as well as joining in some of the other activities. We've got brilliant um, Phil Wanley who's going to do a boot camp for us. We've got Ruth Mitchell PT is going to do club exercise. The council are getting involved in running a pound session for us. And we're hopefully going to get some other groups involved in well. So that'll be brilliant. So that's the 27th, 28th of February. Yeah, and some of them activities sound quite strenuous, but there is some things on there. Um, I myself, I'm, I'm often for um, a dog walk. So we try and yep. get 25 people out there with their dogs just walking for an hour. Um, so there is things on there for all abilities. Yeah, completely is. It doesn't, like I said, doesn't have to be wild and wacky and it doesn't have to be strenuous. Just anything you can do as long as you're moving. Um, and it'll be great to see everyone's photos and videos uh, using the hashtag UC25 and that'll be all over our Facebook and social media on the weekend. Is there anything we've missed, Paula? Is there anything else we need to talk about? Um, well, I think there's... Um people out there first of all if we can just make sure that people out there can identify themselves as a carer and um, if they can have a think about do i actually look after somebody would they manage if i didn't do that um get in touch with us if you have a question you don't even need to um you know register straight away just give us a ring we'll have a chat with you and you know we can we yeah. can talk about some of the things that we can do and you know that, that there's things that we can help with some of the there's other things like we, we we've got um, the ability to apply for grants for people as well if they end up in a crisis situation there's so many things we, we've been established for over 25 years so um you know and some of our ladies have been employed for quite a number of those years so th th there's not much that they don't know and there's not many things that we, we we don't know where we can send you to if we don't know so please do get in touch and ask the questions yeah please don't don't be scared don't be embarrassed be proud be proud of what you're doing be proud of the caring role that you've got because you are helping someone whether or not you realize it you you are a help to them absolutely and i think what people don't realize is that i think i'm not sure whether the the, the, the figure 
actually is outdated. But um, up until maybe last year and before um, COVID, there was one in ten people who were gonna would be a carer. So and yeah. um, I had two or three in five that would be a carer at some point in their life. So there is lots of us out there who, who have a care and role. Um, sometimes we just have to have a little think about it to to acknowledge that we are really. Yeah. And that just leads me on, um, the other thing we'd really like to do and get involved with, I know it's difficult at the moment, but we'd really like to get involved with schools and local businesses to help them identify carers and support carers within their environment, whether it be within school or helping workplaces become carer friendly. Um, oh, there's Bruno. I was just thinking I was going to manage to get through a whole, a whole one of these without Bruno barking and he's just appeared. So... But yeah, we'd love to get sort of involved with schools and employers to make them more carer friendly too. So if you've got a business or you're involved in a school um, and you'd like more information on that, we've got um, an employer friendly, uh, employer friendly, a carer friendly employer charter we can do with you, give you all the training and support to that. Um, just to make the sort of the work environment and the school environment a little bit easier for your, those carers too absolutely yeah um and we do we we have um you know we've worked alongside schools and gps and um social work teams for, for a long time now so you know it, it is getting easier and people are identifying themselves and other people are recognizing people that were carers um but there's there's always something more that we can do and if if you feel that we can help please give us a call yeah definitely uh so the number to ring is 01429 you can also find us on facebook twitter uh we've got a youtube channel with um all of our past talking tuesdays if you want to watch any of those there's also some seated exercise videos you can have a look at to see what that's all about before you join in and it's got uh, we've got our web page as well which has got loads of information about what we do um so any questions please give us a ring drop us an email or like paula said you can register via the website the dead quick easy form or give us a ring and we'll go through that process with you too and, and just one other thing is just to say um talk on tuesdays if this is something that um you find beneficial and you would like um, somebody in particular or an organisation in particular to come on to talk on Tuesdays, drop us a line, tell us who you want to hear from. Um, you know, yeah, definitely. You, so, so let us know. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a really good point. If there is anyone you think it'd be really good to hear from or you are part of a group and you'd like to come on, drop us a message and we'll get that booked in. Have I lost you, Paula? Um, I think I'm still here. Yeah, we've done well to stay on. I think haven't we? we have. We've done really well to stay on this long. <laughs> we might not push our luck, so we might uh, we might call it a day now, unless there's anything else we've forgotten. But I don't think so. No, but we, you know, have have a look on our website. There's there's lots of great information on there, um, and then you know you can have a look on there. Give us a call. Um, but no question is a silly question. Um, yeah, and I've asked plenty questions. of questions. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, well, oh, I will just mention my role, seeing so I'm here. So my role's changed a little bit, obviously, due to COVID. I've only been in the role a year and I only spent three months in the office. But uh, as community development lead, my role's sort of getting the awareness of carers out, but also helping carers get into the community. So... I can offer support in terms of if there is any, if you are registered carers with us and you need a little bit of support in terms of getting involved in activities over Zoom at the moment, whatever that may be, that's something I can help with too. So, you know, you, you're definitely not alone. Um, and please just get in touch with us and we'll help you as best we can. Yeah, that's perfect. And at the moment, we are staying home and we're staying safe and everything is online. But eventually, we will be back out there. We will be in the communities where you live. So, you know, we, we're really looking forward to getting back to, to what we used to do, um, being out there and being involved in any activities and events. Definitely. And we're missing seeing everyone. I know we're seeing them over Zoom, 
but it's not the same and we're, we can't wait to get back in person with our carers. Right. Well, that, I think that Paula's brief. When, when we can have yeah. um, people back. All right. I think we're pushing yeah, our luck now, Paula. <laughs> so I'm going to say thank you very much. It's been lovely speaking to you. And um, thank you for your time. And it's been really useful. And I hope it's been useful to everybody else out there. So that's another Talking Tuesday. Thank you for watching. And I will see you next week. Bye.